Hello folks and welcome to Bells Hill Central Parish Church on what is, hopefully you can see all the nice sun, on a beautifully sunny Sunday afternoon. When I'm here recording your episode 30 of our Organist Entertains in our virtual church. Now what I thought I would do today is show you the playpen. That's what I call it. And I'm just moving back a bit so that I can flip the camera around. The playpen is the organ pit. Now, the organ pit is simply, what it kind of suggests by the name, it's a pit in which the organ console sits. And at Bells Hill Central, because we took out some pews and made the chancel a little bit longer, we have had to put some railings round about the organ so that nobody, quite literally, falls into the organ pit. Which is where it comes, which where comes the nickname from me is, it's the playpen. The playpen that I go in a couple of times per week normally and play the organ. Now, the playpen, the organ pit, is probably a little bit different to what it was back in 1930 when the organ was installed. So I'll go down and I'll just show you a little bit. So first of all, we need to go down some steps. And then you can sit down in the organ pit. And then you have got a kind of funny view of the back of the church. But in the organ pit, you're in control of this console down here. And it's quite good because you get to see the choir behind me and the minister up in the pulpit so you've got a good bird's eye view of what you need to see to be the organist. Now what's in the organ pit? Well we have a little shelf down here with books and folders and stickers so that I can find particular hymns quickly or pieces of music quickly. Now this is something a little bit different this is a VGA cable and a mouse which the likes of Mr Symington who was organist here at Bells Hill MacDonald Memorial for many years perhaps would have found a bit strange being in his organ pit. And moving round to the right there are a selection or two of hymn books, a heater to keep me warm and moving further round we have the laptop which controls the MIDI. So perhaps a heater Mr Symington might have been pleased to have, but I'm sure that to have this sitting on the organ bench would have looked a bit bizarre to him. And a little bit about the organ pit. The organ pit is sunk a good couple of feet into the floor. As you can see, that goes down quite a bit. And the organ bench is basically in line with the floor. Now, that means there's not much distance between my feet, the pedal board, and the clay underneath the church. That means it can get quite cold and damp. However, it's quite fun being down in the organ pit, in the playpen, week by week, playing the organ. So I hope that's let people who maybe was a little bit interested proper close up of the organ pit and how you get down into it and the nickname that I have for it being the playpen. So enough from me, we'll now get on to introducing our first hymn. That is Angel Voices Ever Singing. Now that is a hymn which we all know and love. Excuse me if I make anybody dizzy. I'm just going back down into the organ pit. It is a hymn full of joy that we all love to sing. The choir here in Bells Hill Central have also sang an anthem arrangement of it. And I'm going to steal the last verse from it because it gives a little alternative arrangement to it and the desk cant, which some of the choir ladies may remember singing. This hymn has been requested by my mum, Mary Matthew, who's been a choir singer for, for many, many years. 
and it's a hymn which she loves to sing. It's got a good alto line for her, and it's got enough verses that she can make a good stab at it. I won't gonna, I'm not going to say she might get it right by the last verse. I would dare not say that, of course, but I'm sure she gets it right from the get-go. So here for my mum and for everyone else who loves this hymn, we have Angel Voices. enjoyed the first hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing. Now, the introductions are coming from Peggy's corner this week. Peggy usually sits behind my shoulder, operating the, the church screens for us. So I thought I would come to Peggy's corner just to remind her what it looks like as I introduce the rest of episode 30's Hymns and Songs. Our second song tonight is a request of Morag MacLeod. Morag is an avid follower of our virtual church's organist entertains, so it's only fair that she gets another choice. Her hymn is the happy and joyful, O oh, happy day. So I do hope that the hands are clapping, the feet are tapping, and that you're making as much noise as possible. Enjoy this fine hymn. <laughs>
Now, normally after the second hymn in church, we have the offering uplifted when the duty team pick up their offering plates and go around the pews collecting people's free will offering envelopes. So what I thought I would do is play something a little bit more quieter that I may perhaps play for the offering. It is a request as well, and it's come from Alexa Walker, and it is the Easter hymn, O Rejoice, the Intermezzo from Cavallano Rusticano. It was a great favourite of Bill Cameron's as well, and he was practising it on his violin so that we could record it, but unfortunately that never happened. So here for Alexa, and with a nod to Bill, is the Easter hymn, the Intermezzo. This past week, we have had two wedding anniversaries. First of all, Leslie and David Marshall, members here at Bells Hill Central Parish Church, married, in fact, here in this building when it was MacDonald Memorial. Secondly, Jeanette McIntyre, a follower of The Organist Entertains, the virtual church from here in Bells Hill. Jeanette and her husband Dick celebrated, I believe, 51 years of marriage. They were married at Thornley Church in Wishaw all those many years ago. Now, for both of these couples, the next two hymns are hymns and songs from their wedding ceremony. For Leslie and David, we have the hymn, Be Our Chief Guest, Lord, which is sung to the familiar tune of Benesson, otherwise familiar to Morning Has Broken. And for Richard 
I'm giving you your Sunday name there. Jeanette and Dick McIntyre, we have Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, to the tune of Hifridal. I do hope that by hearing these hymns, each of these couples remember their, their happy wedding day and the many years that they've spent together thereafter. So for Leslie and David, we have Be Our Chief Guest, Lord, and Dick and Jeanette, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
have a hymn requested by Andrew McLeod. Andrew is a follower of The Organist Entertains and is a member of Clincat Hill Church in Glasgow in the, the shadows of Hamden Park, I believe. The hymn and song that Andrew has requested is a hymn with which is new words, but he has chosen an old familiar tune. The words are, God our Father, how we thank you. And we sing it to the great tune of Abbot's Lee. I do hope that you enjoy Andrew's new hymn for us and it fits this, this old tune very well for you. So thanks again, Andrew. And we have God our Father, how we thank you.
midway point brings us to a request by our friend from Edinburgh, John Hume, from Clegg Lockhart Church. His request has been chosen before, but as I keep saying, these organist entertains are your requests and your virtual churches. So having hymns sang over and over again isn't a bad thing. His request is a paraphrase. It is, O God of Bethel, by whose hand. I know that this is a favourite too of Bells Hill Central people, Alexa and Bobby Walker. It is, of course, sung to the tune of Salzburg, which I'm sure is familiar to lots of you. So thanks, John, for requesting this grand old paraphrase. O God of Bethel, by whose hand. <laughs> to a Bells Hill Central request now. This, I think, is Bells Hill Central's favourite hymn. I will have to count up, but we've probably included it in the last 30 episodes, maybe around about five or six times. It's requested by the clerk to the board here at Bells Hill Central, and that is Mrs Cathy Bryden. Now, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Puts her in a proper place. Within the, the courts of the church here at Bells Hill Central, the Kirk Session employ me, as in they do the contract with me. However, the day-to-day -day operation of that contract of employment falls to the board, and it falls upon the clerk to the board to be my line manager, my boss. So whenever my boss requests a hymn, I do have to include it. So it is on a hill far away, the old rugged cross, and I know that this is a very firm favourite of Cathy's. So, Cathy, thank you for picking the hymn, which I think is Bells Hill Central's most requested hymn, On a Hill Far Away. <laughs>
these organist entertains never fail to amaze me. We have hymns requested from all over the world, and this is one that comes from Ed in South Africa. The hymn is How Pleasant Are Thy Courts, and it's to the tune of Maidstone, which I hadn't heard before, but it's an utterly lovely tune, and I've just got to thank Ed for requesting it so that we can have such lovely tunes on these episodes. As I say, the words will come up on the screen and you may find them familiar, but they were new to me as well. And they are, How pleasant are thy courts. To the tune of Maidstone, requested by Ed Anderson, our friend from South Africa.
finishing off tonight, we have a request from Elspeth Dornan. Now, Elspeth sings in our church choir when she's able to come to church and loves singing. She loves new hymns and she loves old hymns, and she particularly likes the redemption, clappy, make plenty of noise hymns. The request that Elspeth has for us tonight finishes the requests section. The hymn is, Are You Washed in the Blood? Now, I'm sure that when we start back and get back to church, that I'll have the choir singing this, and I'm sure that I'll see some people in the front row put their music down, put their hands together, and clap their hands, because it certainly is a hand-clapping, toe-tapping song. Thanks, Elspeth, for bringing this hymn to my attention, and perhaps to other people, bringing it to their memories and bringing it back from days of old. Are you washed in the blood? <laughs> the hymns and requests are all done and since I slotted something in at the after the second hymn which would be where we take our offering I thought I would play something that I've not played for a while it's from a collection of organ volunteers for church organ for church settings perhaps meaning that it's more accessible to some players who might find some other things a little bit difficult it's a book by Albert H. Oswald. And in the book there are 15, 16 items and I've played these over the course of many years. Now for any church organists watching, I don't know about you, but me, I tend to find a book or two and then use that book for about a month, playing the different things out of it. 
and then it gets put back on a shelf in a cupboard or in a box for to probably be left there for a couple of years. So today, in preparation for me showing the organ pit at Bells Hill Central, I tidied up a little bit. It was getting a little bit mucky. And I came across this book and I thought there are some lovely pieces in it and I'll hold over some more for next week. But what I thought I would do as I'm flicking through to find it, because I can't remember the name of it, is play something which would be appropriate for the end of the service. It is a piece of music called March Triumphal. It's got lots of triplets in it. It's got lots of fanfare soundy type things in it. And it's got a fun kind of jollier section in the middle before we come back to the original triplet fanfare trumpety thing. I've not played it for yonks, and I do hope that those who come to Bells Hill Central, who may have heard it, enjoy hearing it again. But I'll keep the book for next time, and I'll play some more out of it. Perhaps some of the quieter pieces, which show off, I have to say, the flute stops rather well on our church organ. But anyway, enough from me. We now have the March Triumphal by Albert H. Oswald for to finish tonight's Organist Entertains. And if you wish to have a request, please drop us a line, comment below, drop an email, or just simply get in touch with me or anyone else at Bells Hill Central, and we'll do our very best to get it included. So what is becoming our catchphrase, or our signing off phrase, is stay safe, keep well, and we'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>
In closing tonight, I thought I would give you a little insight as to what it takes to record these virtual churches an organist entertains. We use my mobile phone and connected to it, there is an external microphone. So apologies if this is going to make a little noise. But this is what I use when I'm talking so that you can hear me loud and clear. At the organ, we've got some more little things and I'll just show you what they are just now. At the organ, I utilise a flower stand of all things to hold an external microphone and that faces up into the building, hopefully capturing the full sound of the organ. And here we have a little tripod stand. That's what holds the phone angled on me playing the organ so you can see me at work. So there's a couple of things that we've got to plug in to make these organist entertains come together. Once all the files have been recorded, I take the phone home with me, of course, and transfer it onto a laptop and just edit it together. It doesn't take that long, really. But the footery part is making sure that the words going up the screens match all the verses that I play. And that's a little bit footery and it takes a wee bit of time to do that, but not that much time really. What I will do is apologise if somebody has requested a hymn and it's not your version of words. Now that's just pure laziness on my part. If I can find it, I copy and paste it and use it. And that might mean sometimes there's a slightly different version of words, which I do apologise for. But if you've got a specific set of words when you're requesting a hymn, tell me about it and I will include it. I will type it out or look that little bit further if that is your particular request. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's Organist Entertains. You've enjoyed seeing down the organ pit at the start and that you have found it interesting to know just a little bit about what goes on to put these episodes together. Thanks folks, stay safe, and we'll see you next week for episode 31.